everybody, Dr. Shadi Rafich here, Surgeon in True Care for Pet Studio City, Los Angeles. Thank you so much for tuning in to our podcast. Our podcast. <laughs> anyway, today's topic um, is going to get a little bit serious. We're uh, going to be addressing the recent social media posts on veterinary suicides. And basically, um, the idea behind this podcast is going to be to talk about veterinary medicine is it a passion or is it a means to an end and the reason why i think this topic is of course important is because obviously lives are being affected in a very dramatic and sad way which really we could um, i think everybody would agree that something that should not be occurring in this profession Um, and so let's talk about the veterinary profession as a passion let's talk about it as a job or a career choice and why those two things matter The majority of veterinarians end up choosing the field because of a really strong passion to taking care of pets. They understand that pets are a very important part of family members, uh, family households. They understand that pets can do so many things for us as human beings, everything from provide a sense of purpose to providing companionship to um, enjoying agility exercises or competing in, in dog shows and uh and and the list goes on and on animals hold a very special place in our hearts and especially in the united states pets are really held to a very high regard they're treated as a family member and the um the amount of uh the the health care that people are providing to their pets and the amount of money they're spending on their pets just continues to go up and up every year Uh, pets are living longer and this is all thanks to the excellent Uh, client, our pet owners, patient care, and the veterinary fields, um, the veterinary field improving in its its technology and what it can have available to pet owners to take care of their pets. We're becoming more and more advanced. And so the majority of pet owners um, understand that veterinarians are are in this for the compassion. Sure, yes, it's a job, it's a way of making money, it's it's a career choice, but it also is something that becomes more of a way of life. Veterinary students are often compelled to try the hardest they can in veterinary school because they are they are driven by this compassion. They want to do what they can to help those without a voice, meaning animals. They want to help those those silent um, uh, patients that are suffering that need medical attention, medical care, and so they are primarily run by compassion. That compassion is absolutely admirable. We expect our veterinarians to have that that type of feeling when they're dealing with their their furry patients it's it comes with the field you would uh, you may not have the same feeling when you go into a car mechanic that they have a strong passion for fixing automobiles and helping helping you out just from a general sense of of care you know they are we look at those that type of profession as being one where you know they're 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 trying to help you out but they want to make money it's a business and the veterinary field is no different. We also need to make money. It is a business. But in everybody's mind, I would say across the board, you expect the veterinarian to be compassionate, to be caring, to emphasize, um, uh, show empathy with you as a concerned pet owner to take care of these pets. And so there is a cost. There's a price to pay with that. Um, the, the compassion fatigue that is now all over social media is a real thing. And you have several different, I guess, forms of it, or maybe different routes that this fatigue can take place. I would say that um, veterinarians are classically known to be hard workers. They tend to also be folks that, that work best on their own. And so they tend to overwork themselves. They, they tend not to delegate responsibility effectively, work that well in a team environment. They don't know how to uh, share responsibility and they end up getting burnt out. And that happens quite frequently. In fact, if you see a a veterinary hospital with only one clinician, it's not uncommon that they are working five to seven days a week because they can't afford to be closed. At the same time, they can't seem to to find a colleague to hire, to work alongside them for whatever reason. And it ends up being a scenario where they just work themselves to the bone. And that's one method of fatigue. And the second method of fatigue, which is the one that I'm pretty much referring to here and is what is going to lead the second part of this conversation regarding suicide, is fatigue that veterinarians get from their clients. Pet owners are not only more compassionate and more forthcoming about 
that about progressing veterinary care, but they are becoming more demanding. And you want pet owners that are to a certain degree demanding. I mean, we want them to invest in their pets. We want them to want to um, undergo the best tests, the most advanced treatment options for their pet. We don't want them to ever say no. If, if the veterinarian believes that you should do this test and that treatment and whatever, and that's the best thing for your pet in your scenario, well, we want you to do that. As a pet owner, we want you to agree to those, to those recommendations. And so we want pet owners to be able to feel comfortable and able to spend money on their pets. That's the only way we can get tests and treatments done, obviously. So with that, though, comes a subset of individuals, of pet owners that are incredibly demanding that um, anytime anything goes wrong with their pet or the progression of the pet's care doesn't move in the right direction, the response is not what they expect it to be, the pet is having complications or um, dies unexpectedly, something that is beyond what you expect to happen, some sort of horrible surprise, the client then turns to the veterinarian and asks the question, is this your fault? What did you do to my pet? How come I spent this much money and my pet is not well or my pet has passed away? And this sounds like it's common to any business, and it is, um, but it seems as though the veterinary profession itself has sort of a unique response to this, where they, the veterinarian will internalize this type of grief, they'll blame themselves, they are not sure what happened, why didn't this case turn out the way this ca the case should have turned out, and they um, end up becoming over time emotionally scarred from repeated incidences like this. Let's face it, there's no profession that does not have its complications. Every, every job has its risks, and we're dealing with medicine and surgery, and, and uh, these are biological beings that we're dealing with. We're not just replacing a, a, a part in a car. We're dealing with a biological being with complex body parts, with diseases that are sometimes too far gone, or sometimes bad things just happen, even though they shouldn't. And the veterinarian is being bombarded uh, daily, weekly, monthly with clients that are unhappy because something went wrong that was unexpected or the client's un expectations were unrealistic. Either way, you end up with an angry client who's upset, blaming the veterinarian for doing some th something wrong and um, the veterinarian ends up, uh, they're hurt by it and they internalize it and it affects their ability to come into work with a positive mindset. It affects their ability to want to see the next case and, and show the next, the next case all they have to offer. It becomes quite the challenge and um, it is something that over time will lead to not only compassion fatigue, but some veterinarians unfortunately have decided to take their own life because they just can't handle it anymore. And it's interesting because you'd think, well, you know, the job is so stressful. Why not get another one? I want to maybe change the, the, uh, the work environment somehow or find ways of taking more time off or finding other hobbies. But it's, it's, I think what it comes down to with veterinary medicine is that, that shock of I went into this profession thinking I'm going to do the best that I can for those pets that need help. Pet owners are going to love me because I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing my best. And yet, for some reason, the clientele have turned against me, blaming me for everything that goes wrong. They don't want to pay their bill. They're reporting me to the medical board. They're suing me in claims court. They're saying, saying nasty things about us on social media, horrible Yelp reviews, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind, that kind of shock for some people is unbearable. It ends up being the profession that they decided to dedicate their lives to ends up being not a, a road of, of passion that ends up being just a horrible nightmare, a job that they wish they never took. And unfortunately, if you don't have the right coping mechanisms, you don't talk to people about, about these concerns, there have been veterinarians that have killed themselves. And that should never happen anywhere, and it shouldn't happen in any profession, and it should not happen in the veterinary profession. It's absolutely obscene that this is the level of stress and fatigue and, and concern and worry that these veterinarians are going through. And it's, it's the younger veterinarians, you know, this younger generation are growing up well, with a mindset that if they pursue a career that's, that's full of good intentions and transparency and they're doing the best they can and money is not the goal, the goal is to save lives and to make animals' lives better and to make your life as a pet owner better, and 
they're going into this with a very, very positive outlook, maybe a little bit different than my generation. You know, I've been doing this over 13 years, I'm 39 years old. And so the younger doctors are coming out of school now, they're in their mid 20s, mid to upper 20s, are not handling this type of lashback from clients very well. And they're also growing up in a world of social media where any client can say anything about you anytime on any platform. And if you find that out, it's gonna hurt your feelings. And it makes you doubt why you even, it starts off with doubting, what am I doing wrong in my daily life? To what am I doing wrong as a veterinarian? To why am I even a veterinarian? To why, why, why do I even do any kind of job that has an impact on people's lives? They're just going to throw it back to my face anyway. To why am I even deserving of life? To I should probably kill myself. And it has this insane effect on these individuals that have the best of intentions, have a good heart. And it just, it's, it's, it's become a toxic environment. And so with that, the question becomes, is veterinary medicine a passion or is it a means to an end? And you could argue that in an ideal world, you would find your career based on a passion. That would be what the majority of veterinarians do. And, but I would also argue then if that's the case, you're not going to have a 100% happy clientele. You're not going to have a 100% success rate with your patients. And so perhaps the better mindset is to go into it as a job, which is what it is, a career choice. And then over time, as you get better and better at client communications, you get better at your medicine, you get better at coping with these emotional pitfalls, you end up turning that career into a passion. And I would, I would probably recommend that mentality more so than the former. Um, the, the difficult thing that we have here, of course, is that we expect youngsters to choose a career path at an early age. You know, you're supposed to graduate high school and go into college knowing what you want to do for the rest of your life. And that amongst many other factors, I, I, my intention is not to have this discussion be about the socio-political system in America and, and talk about um, uh, those type of dynamics, but it is, it's the difficult situation and it starts young. And if you're able to separate the passion from the career, I would say that in lieu of this, uh, this uh, um, rise, the apparent rise of suicide in the veterinary profession, that you look at the veterinary profession as a career, as a job, it's a means to an end. And over time, you find out you're getting better at it and you're actually enjoying it and you know how to deal with difficult clients, with upset scenarios, how to improve your medicine, your client communication, then let that career turn into a passion. And from there, you can, you can, you can skyrocket. Don't ever let any job or anything really in life ever get to the point where you're questioning your own right to live. That's absolutely um, pathologic, it's toxic, it's insane, it's not right. And so if a veterinarian um, is listening to this, then, and you're considering something awful like suicide, or you're just not happy with your career and you're worried it may go in that trajectory, I suggest talking to somebody, getting help. The solution may not, necessarily, may not necessarily be to run away from the decision of being a veterinarian, but you can find some way of coping with it, some sort of um, a method of, of deterring these negative thoughts so you can continue to have a fulfilling career that you spend so much time and money um, in to, to uh, end up with. If you are an aspiring veterinarian listening to this, then I would not be discouraged. You should, if you're looking into this, you think it's a career that you'd be interested in and you want to pursue it, pursue it. And just realize that, of course, like any job, there's no such thing as having good days and bad days. Or rather, there's no such thing as having all, all good days. You're going to have bad days. Those bad days are going to come at a random random frequency. You may have a whole bunch of bad days in a row, or you may go six months without a bad day, and all of a sudden get, get something horrible unexpectedly. Um, it's a job just like any other. And so I still encourage you to become a veterinarian if that's what you have interest in. But it is by no means something where every single client is going to love you uh, for being a veterinarian, for doing the best job you can. Not every pet's going to make it that should make it. And it is just the nature of the beast of what we're, what we're dealing with here. So, um, so just to recap, uh, is veterinary medicine, is it a, a passion or a means to an end? I would suggest that you uh, view it as a career, let it turn into a passion. If you're experiencing really hard times, in the field, doubting why you even should be a veterinarian or even doubting why you should be alive. I suggest you, you seek medical attention, figure out the best way to do it, leave the profession if you have to. Nothing is worth your life, nothing is worth you going to work miserable every day. It's just not the way it's supposed to be. 
If you work this hard to get a career like this, you should be able to enjoy it. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you everybody for listening. This is Dr. Shadia Rafish, True Care for Pets, Studio City, Los Angeles. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you in the next, po- next podcast episode. Take care.